So the, 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 the debate is now open, and I call Mr. Gulevensky, please. Mr. Gulevsky? Is Mr. Gulevsky from Russia? Is he here? Спасибо, господин председатель. Уважаемые дамы и господа, выступление по достаточно сложной, на мой взгляд, теме начну с очевидного. В нашем стремительно меняющемся мире преимущество, безусловно, будет у тех государств, которые эффективно используют инновационный потенциал развития, основным носителем которого является молодежь. Россия в этом смысле не исключение. Темп продвижения страны по пути демократических преобразований во многом зависит от позиции молодежи, ее социальной активности, уверенности в завтрашнем дне. Молодежи отводится решающая роль в модернизации России. Поэтому привлечение ее к участию в общественно-политической жизни – Формирование конструктивного и авторитетного молодежного сообщества – важнейшая задача для органов власти. В полумиллионном городе Липецке, который я имею честь представлять, 30% населения составляет молодежь. Это достаточно значимая сила, с которой власть выстраивает партнерские отношения. На региональном и муниципальных уровнях мы стремимся помочь молодым людям проявить себя, предоставить возможность для дальнейшей самореализации. В городе созданы условия для поддержки и развития социально значимых инициатив молодежи. Одна из наиболее традиционных и эффективных форм – это система муниципальных грантов. Каждый третий заявленный проект реализуется молодежью. В 2012 году 70% профинансированных заявок были посвящены молодежной тематике, в том числе вопросам занятости, организации досуга, пропаганде здорового образа жизни, интеграции в общество людей с ограниченными возможностями здоровья и многими другими. Продуктивно проходят ежегодные форумы молодежи города, где совместно с руководителями органов самоуправления обсуждаются наиболее актуальные проблемы, ведется поиск оптимальных путей их решения, вырабатывается общая стратегия действий. Так, два года назад, по, предлеж... по предложению участников форума, при главе города создан Координационный совет по вопросам работы с молодежью куда вошли представители общественных организаций, структурных подразделений мэрии, депутаты местного парламента. А уже в 2012 году Координационным Советом разработана, утверждена и включена в бюджет для финансирования целевая городская программа «Молодежь». На протяжении нескольких лет муниципалитет проводит конкурс «Молодой лидер города Липецка». Это социально ориентированный проект, в ходе которого молодые горожане в полной мере могут раскрыть свой лидерский потенциал. Кстати, победители этого конкурса учитываются при составлении муниципального кадрового резерва. Особое внимание уделяется повышению электоральной культуры молодежи как основному формату демократизации общества. При Липецком городском и областных советах депутатов на протяжении 8 лет Работают молодежные парламенты. Их главная цель – привлечение молодежи к активному участию в жизнедеятельности государства, разработке и реализации эффективной молодежной политики. И, кстати, многие их представители впоследствии сами пробуют силы на взрослых выборов. И не случайно в последние годы парламент у нас существенно изменился, и там 20% доходят молодежи в наших парламентах. В то же время нельзя забывать о том, что молодежь достаточно неоднородна по социальному составу, по взглядам и убеждениям. Далеко не вся она изъявляет готовность к сотрудничеству. Существует немало молодых людей, не согласных с действиями власти и избравших в качестве основной протестной площадки интернет. Основанием, осваиваем новые формы работы с блогерами, критикующими отдельные отраслевые ведомства. В этом году встречались несколько руководителей городских департаментов. В связи с этим хотелось бы отметить еще один аспект обсуждаемой темы. Я заканчиваю. Информационная открытость власти – один из очень важных факторов сохранения социальной стабильности в обществе. И, пожалуй, прежде всего в молодежной среде. Спасибо. Thank you, Mr. 
Kulansky, and I beg you to, to stay to the speaking time because we are running out of time, as you know. Uh, the next speaker I call is, is Ms. Kulius. Floor is yours, please. My family is Pilus. Пилюс Наталья, российская делегация. Я хотела поблагодарить бы докладчиков и выступающих за проработанную актуальную тему молодежной политики. И хочу сказать, что она созвучна тем настроением, которые сейчас э, витают в молодежной среде. Совсем недавно, 23-25 сентября этого года, я как представитель Конгресса принимала участие в 9-й конференции министров по делам молодежи государств, член Совета Европы, где кроме всех министров по 47 стран руководителей нашего Конгресса, ПАСЭ, основными действующими лицами была молодежь. И я принимала участие в секции демократии и участия основными темами обсуждения были вопросы развития форм, форм политического участия молодежи, проблемы поиска механизмов поддержки культурного разнообразия, необходимость развития межкультурного и межпоколенческого диалога. Обсуждался сложный вопрос, возможность и необходимость, своевременность, снижение возраста для участия в выборах. И молодежи ставился вопрос о возможности квотирования мест для молодежи во всех выборах. Но, несмотря на то, что тема была демократия участия, самый большой вопрос, который занимал молодежь, это, безусловно, вопросы, связанные с безработицей. И мы все понимаем, что этот вопрос представляет угрозу безопасности социального мира и стабильности в будущем, чревато ростом бедности среди молодежи и увеличением расходов на пособие по безработице. И, безусловно, хотелось бы обсуждалась необходимость обеспечения социальных и специальных мер защиты трудовых прав молодежи. И как вопрос ставился представителям молодежи о необходимости разработать систему социального партнерства с предприятием малого и среднего бизнеса. Ну, на оставшееся время хочу сказать о том, что я как глава района уделяю большое внимание молодежной политике. У меня в течение семи лет существует координационный совет по молодежной политике, есть совет молодежи. И сейчас, когда проходит неделя европейской демократии, первым мероприятием, это 15 числа, проходит выбор в молодежный парламент. Вчера на заседании комиссии мы обсуждали, что в следующем году необходимо уделить внимание молодежи в неделю европейской демократии. Но 4 года молодежь является самым активным участником из 95 мероприятий недели европейской демократии. Больше половины у нас проходит с участием молодежи. Я считаю, за молодежь и Поддерживаю мнение представителя Турции, что молодежь – это не только будущее, но, безусловно, это настоящее наших стран. Thank you very much, Mrs. Phyllis. And then I give the floor to Mr. Testud. Please. Monsieur le Président, chers collègues, je parle au nom de la délégation française. Nous avons souhaité, par ce rapport, montrer que les problèmes de la jeunesse sont aussi au cœur de nos préoccupations. La jeunesse est créative, ardente, parfois provocatrice, souvent impertinente, ou s'oppose au pouvoir établi. Bref, elle est jeunesse. Aujourd'hui, trois jeunes filles ardentes ont été sévèrement condamnées en Russie, avec des peines de prison fermes. Les réseaux sociaux de toute la planète sont indignés par ces condamnations disproportionné par rapport aux actes commis. Nous souhaitons que notre nouveau bureau intervienne auprès de la délégation russe et des autorités de ce pays afin que les voies de recours, si elles sont exercées, se déroulent conformément à la Convention européenne des droits de l'homme qui exige un procès juste et équitable. À défaut, pour des raisons d'humanité que tout le monde va comprendre, Nous espérons que les plus hautes autorités de Russie exercent leur droit de remise de peine, voire recours au droit de grâce, pour que ces jeunes filles retrouvent rapidement la liberté. Nous nous adressons à nos collègues de la délégation russe 
pour que eux aussi soient porteurs de ce message, ce serait formidable pour la jeunesse de leur pays et de l'Europe. Thank you, Mr. Testod. And um, now I must have to ask Mr. Mukamechin if you if you want to speak now or if you want to speak after Mrs. Busatelli. Знаете, я могу выступить и сейчас, могу и потом. Позвольте мне, господин председатель, я очень кратко. Yes. What do you prefer? What? После госпожи Базатли. That concludes the list of speakers. And uh, I want to ask Mrs. Busatli, do you wish to reply? Uh, well, so far, um, it has been rather a very long day, as I told, and the discussions were very dense. And indeed, I feel that our uh, discussions are more important. However, because of the late time, uh, I was expecting to have even more discussions on such a priority issue. But uh, still, I see that uh, people are... Uh, we, the politicians, are focused on youth issues, and I think we now uh, know that it's not just in our words and meetings, but we also need to make concrete steps for including youth in political decision-taking processes. And also, at times of economic crisis, we should, be, we should know that the budget cuts on youth-related issues will, would be the last uh, uh, ones to do savings on. So um, this was a nice discussion. The report was very well done, but we just have to continue and collaborate. That's what I want to say. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pustelli. And now I give the floor to Mr. Mukashemin, who is... Uh, the chair of the Current Affairs Committee. The floor is yours. Спасибо, господин председатель, уважаемые коллеги. Я также хочу поблагодарить и госпожу МП, которая работала над этим непростым докладом длительное время, и госпожу Ханди Базатли, которая сегодня прекрасно доложила этот доклад. И сказать, что в комитете шли очень серьезные дискуссии при обсуждении этого вопроса. Доклад пополнялся, обновлялся, обогащался. Два важных момента, которые я хочу подчеркнуть. В докладе сказано о том, что некоторое снижение политической активности, классической политической активности молодежи в обществе. Одновременно сделан очень серьезный вывод на основании исследований что молодежь не отреклась от демократической и гражданской деятельности. И ее демократические ценности по-прежнему сильны среди молодежи. Это очень важный вывод доклада. А также хочу сказать, что в докладе рассмотрены механизмы обеспечения активизации участия молодежи в функционировании демократического общества на местном и региональном уровнях, ее включение в процессы принятия соответствующих политических решений. Таким образом, 20 марта текущего года на комитете был утвержден доклад, последующим несколько доработан, а вчера на заседании комитета мы окончательно утвердили этот доклад, представили вашему вниманию, а также приняли рекомендованные поправки к ним. И последнее, что я хочу сказать, я думаю, как и мне, было очень приятно слушать подготовленную, ответственную молодежь, которая сегодня выступала перед ними. Большое им спасибо. Thank you, and the debate is now closed. We now come to the consideration of the draft resolution. Uh, the draft resolution is contained in document CG 23-9. Two amendments have been tabled. And I call Mrs. Butasli to present amendment number one on behalf of the rapporteur. The floor is yours. Thank you. Dear colleagues, 
I would like to present one amendment on behalf of our reporter. The revised European Charter on the participation of young people in local and regional life recommends the setting up of local and regional youth councils and parliaments to enable young people to have their say. The Council of Europe youth sector uh, operates on a system of shared decision making or co-management uh, government representatives sit down around the same table with representatives from youth organizations to decide together on the program and the budget of the youth sector. The reporter thinks this is the way forward at local and regional levels. She therefore proposes the following amendment. In the resolution paragraph 9D, deleting representative and legitimate municipal and regional youth councils and parliaments and by means of such tools as the European Local Democracy Week and adding joint decision-making mechanisms mirroring the Council of Europe's co-management system in the form of joint councils composed of elected local regional councillors and youth representatives. Yeah. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? If not so, um, what is the opinion of the chair of the current affairs committee? Are you in favor of the amendment? Господин председатель, мы поддерживаем эту поправку. I will now put amendment number one to the vote. And the vote is open. The vote is closed. And the result? 72 yes, one no, and two abstentions. Amendment number one is agreed. Amendment number two. I call Mr. Varisham to present amendment number two. One minute. Okay, thank you, Mr. Vice President. I would like to add a new paragraph 12 and renumber the paragraphs thereafter accordingly. The new paragraph would read, the Congress invites the coordinator of the European Local Democracy Week to propose that a future edition of the week be devoted to youth, youth participation and promoting young people's access to human and social rights. I've added this amendment as Amendment 1 removes the mention of European Local Democracy Week. My own feeling is that European Local Democracy Week would offer young people that chance to engage with councillors, local politicians, and would add something to cities and municipalities who are involved in the European Local Democracy Week. And I just feel that it's a, a, a great issue and that young people deserve to be involved in it. Thank you very much. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? If not so, what is the opinion of the rapporteur to the cur uh, What is the opinion of the rapporteur? Uh, I'm for supporting this amendment. What is the opinion of the chair of the current affairs committee? Уважаемый господин председатель, комитет вчера поддержал данную поправку. That means that I will now put amendment number two to the vote. The vote is opened. The vote is closed. Please show the result. 75 in favor, zero noun, and one abstention. Amendment number two, two is agreed. Now we will put the draft re resolution as amendment to the vote. And the vote is opened.
The vote is closed. Please show the result. Yes, 78. No, zero. Abstention, one. The draft resolution, as amended, contains in document CG 23.9, is agreed. Then we continue with vote on the draft recommendation. Now we come to the consideration of the draft recommendation. The draft recommendation is contained in document CG 23.9. One amendment has been tabled. And I call for Mrs. Barnes to present amendment number one. You have one minute. In its resolution 1885 2012, the Parliamentary Assembly concerned that young people's autonomy, dignity and well-being are severely affected by the growing economic and social inequalities caused by the current financial and economic crisis, urges the Council of Europe member states to adopt a series of initiatives and policies. These include enhancing public social security coverage and encourage a greater use of private pension schemes for young people in temporary low-paid or otherwise precarious employment, as well as ensuring that first-time job seekers have access to social benefits. As the Parliamentary Assembly text is far more reaching than existing paragraph 6C, I propose to amend it as follows. Implement, sorry, replace the text in the existing paragraph C with the following text. Implement resolution 1885 2012 of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe on the young generation sacrificed social, economic and political implications of the financial crisis. Thank you, Mrs. Barnes. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? So, what is the opinion of the rapporteur? I am for supporting the amendment, so I approve it. What is the opinion of the chair of the Current Affairs Committee? Committee поддерживает данную поправку. Thank you for that. I will now put amendment number one to the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Please show the result. 68 yes, zero, none, and five abstentions. Amendment number one is agreed. I will now put the draft recommendation as amended to the vote. The vote is open. The vote is closed. Please show the result. 74 yes, 1 no, 0 abstention. The draft recommended, recommendation as amended continue, continued in document CG 23.9 is agreed. And I want to thank the rapporteur and the commission for all the work. Thank you very much. And now we turn over to the right of local authorities to be consulted by other levels of government. And as I said before, we will only start this point and after that we will break the session. And ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Sir Alan Meal. Sir Alan, it is very good to see you here. You are an old friend of the Congress and the Parliamentary Assemblies, General Rapporteur for Local and Regional Democracy Issues, which is excellent news for the Congress. And I will take this opportunity to remind the members here that you are also our main interlocutor in the Assembly with regards to the follow-up to last year's Minister Conference in Kiev. One of the things that came out of Kiev was a clear intention to cooperate more closely with our political partners within the Council of Europe on local and regional democracy matters. We had a very productive discussion with you at the Assembly session two weeks ago where we agreed to coordinate our future activities with regards to citizens' participation and promoting human rights at local level. I am very pleased that you have chosen to speak in the debate on the right of local authorities to be consulted by other levels of government. It will be interesting for us to hear the national parliamentarian level perspectives. Sir Alan, you have the floor. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, 
Mr. President, can I thank you for those very, very warm remarks, but uh, it was very kind of you, Brad. Could do less with the title old being put in there. Uh, I'm a friend. I'm a friend. Can I say to members of Congress, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, that I'll be as brief as I possibly can uh, uh, tonight because of the time scale, and I know people have had a very, very hard day, but let me begin by congratulating uh, Hervig van Staar on his uh, election to, as the new President of Congress. Um, I'm aware of his many years of understanding and participation in local and regional affairs, and I believe the Congress and local and regional authorities generally be well served by his presidency. Of course, it would be remiss of me not to also take the opportunity to pay tribute to his predecessor, Keith Whitmore from the United Kingdom, uh, whom I believe will be a very, very hard act to follow. I've, I've known and, and worked with him over the past 12 of his 16 years at the Congress, during which time we have represented uh, respectively many, uh, many joint roles on respective bodies on sustainable development, transport, environment, and of course, local and regional affairs. And I can honestly say he did his job very well and his verve will be very, very sadly missed indeed. I can always, in inclusion on this particular section, recall his work where we worked together on recognition of climate change and the problems there. And I was always uh, very, very pleased to work in partnership with him, the Assembly and the Congress. Sir, so today I have the pleasure and honour of addressing you again, not only as the representative of the Committee on Social Affairs, Health and, of course, Sustainable Development, but also in my capacity as General Rapporteur on Regional and Local Authorities of the Parliamentary Assembly, a post which I have had the honour to hold since April of this year. In this capacity, I continue to closely follow the activities and, of course, debates taking place within the Congress itself. And with great interest, I have taken note of the new Congress priorities for the years 2013 to 2016, which you debated and adopted yesterday, and which included the objectives of, firstly, raising the quality of local and regional democracy and, of course, human rights in, in Europe. Secondly, helping local and regional authorities to rise to the new challenges, particularly uh, res resulting from the economic and financial crisis which we're all facing. And thirdly, the development uh, developing cooperation and, of course, partnership between various bodies. I would like to personally congratulate you on all of these most ambitious objectives and once again pay credit to the Congress's members' knowledge and, of course, experience in leading this extremely important tier of, of the democratic process and, of course, their application to local good governance. Let me uh, say at the outset that the Parliamentary Assembly shall, of course, support you in achieving these objectives wherever possible. However, as you are aware, the Assembly, with its eight political committees and its own specific rules of procedure, uh, does not fix its priorities and work programmes of such, over such long periods of time. Instead, the Assembly tries to be as reactive as possible with regard to up and coming challenges in order to make a positive impact. Um, it is thus within each committee that we try to achieve a balance between the many different urgent matters to be treated at any one time. Nevertheless, sir, in this respect, I can announce today as General Rapporteur that I will present your proposals for priority action to my own committee at its next meeting to be held in Moscow on the 19th of November and put forward concrete proposals for coherent action to be taken on these matters by the Parliamentary Assembly. Let me now turn to the topic of the, today's agenda. The issue of your debate today is extremely important as the right of local authorities to be consulted constitutes one of the core principles of local democracy according to the Charter on Local Self-Government. Having read your draft resolution recommendation, I fully subscribe to the idea that Member States must, as early as possible, set up robust procedures to enable local and regional authorities to take part in all consultation processes. That is before concluding, not after conclusions have actually been arrived at. Indeed, my recent report on the impact of, ec of the economic crisis on local and regional authorities, debated by the Parliamentary Assembly last June, I underlined that local and regional authorities should be actively involved in developing national reform programmes aimed at adapting to the current crisis in order to express their specific needs. The central question therefore remains how to ensure that local and regional authorities are consulted on all priority matters that concern them. Let me offer to you my committee's thoughts on this, one positive and one not so. 
Firstly, in your draft resolution, you intend to call on associations of all local and regional authorities, in particular, to regularly exchange with each other good practice on consultation issues. I am I'm convinced that this will be one of the main vectors to ensure that local and regional authorities will be involved in decision-making processes by their central governments. It is by uniting these voices that the government's authorities will hear them. In fact, I have to uh, uh, consider that I find it very, very difficult that they'd be able to ignore them. Secondly, in your draft recommendation, you also present a detailed set of proposals that the Committee of Ministers should forward to all Member States. Unfortunately, in this case, I'm not certain if under the current priorities of, and balance of power between Council of Europe bodies, this message will have any kind of a major impact. I say this because I personally believe that by simply urging member states in a global and non-specific manner to involve local and regional authorities in themselves will not be sufficient. To catch their attention, member states must be reminded to, with regard to specific matters and crisis situations, such as the current uh, economic crisis and how important it is to get local and regional authorities involved in the relevant processes in that. This, I believe, is also how we can better address our particular central government stakeholders in a more focused and efficient manner. We should therefore, as you state in your own new priorities, rather start by identifying the challenges for local authorities in the years to come and promote actively the participation of local and regional authorities regarding these specific matters. Never mind if this means conveying the message to central governments over and over and over again. Constant drip feeding is the best option to wear them down. Sir, as everyone here today knows, making the most of limited resources will be a continuous challenge for years to come, both for national and, of course, local and regional government. We therefore must continue to make it very clear to central governments that the constraints they face should not undermine the social responsibilities they have towards your and their constituents. My view, quite frankly, is very straightforward. Local government is at the coalface of democracy. It is dealing with all of the vulnerable groups in society, the sick, the old, the disadvantaged, the disabled, and of course, as we've heard just a few moments ago, the young. It is you who have the to directly deal with uh, government policies in your communities, which includes having to adapt spending priorities caused by central government decisions to your citizens. It is there fundamental that you are involved in any de decision making in this regard. Here today, I can promise you my own and my Assembly's support for you for being able to deliver to these groups and our commitment in your fight for the right to raise awareness of these matters to local authorities, in particular, to be consulted. Such a right and its establishment, of course, leads us back to the interplay between different Council of Europe bodies. Let me take the opportunity to place on record and repeat the assemblies and my view that it is via the Congress and that local and regional authorities contribute to and are consulted within the work of the Council of Europe. That is our primary, primary partnership. Colleagues, in my capacity as the General Rapporteur, many of you may know that I have recently been, uh, I've recently followed very closely the decisions initiated by the British Chairmanship of the Committee of Ministers on the better coordination of Council of Europe bodies and a common agenda as promoted by the Council of Europe Conference of Ministers responsible for local government at their Kiev session in November 2011, which I actually attended. I am therefore well placed to underline once again how important it is that all Council View bodies cooperate closely on issues of common interest to be, uh, be it at the economic crisis or indeed any other important matters. Quite frankly, I do not see why this should not happen in accordance to a more or less formalised common agenda, which includes some of the most urgent challenges in the area of local and regional democracy, which represents the small common denominator between us, that way our bodies won't duplicate our work and thus make uh, uh, ourselves less effective. Ladies and gentlemen, as I repeatedly state, the Parliamentary Assembly is committed to developing closer working relationship with the Congress, as well as the intergovernment sector of the Council of Europe. Let me end by promising you here that the Parliamentary Assembly, as I have indicated, will take concrete steps in that direction in the months to come. And I will, personally will be happy to play an active role on its behalf. Can I just end, sir, by saying this to you? The Council of, of Europe Assembly 
in, in, in many cases is, is treated like you in a kind of second-hand fashion by central government uh, ministers and indeed their executive and civil service. We will always fight for the democratic process to continue and for it not just to be top-down indicators of that, but also to be bottom and middle, up and down. That is our priority and the only way we can achieve that is in partnership. And I give you the word of my uh, assembly and the committee in which I represent here today that we will do whatever is in our endeavour to ensure you get there. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir, and for a very inspiring uh, presentation and speak. And um, I can assure you that we, you, we will take your, your, your open hand for partnership and cooperation in the future. And I will also thank you so much for the support of the work of the Congress that, that you, you, you were showing during your, your, your speech. Uh, absolutely. I will inform uh, the colleagues about the speech today that are not present. And of course, we will continue to work together with you uh, in these important issues. I will not call you an old friend in the future, but I will call you a very close, close friend. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. That uh, closed the part of the, the issue, the, is the last issue today. It will continue, as I said, tomorrow after the intervention of the Minister of uh, Regional Affairs uh, of uh, Estonia, I think it was, yes, Estonia, uh, after 10.30 or something like that. And I want to say to your colleagues, the next and last sitting of the Congress will be at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, the 18th of October. Thursday, excuse me, Thursday, the 18th of October. All members are warmly invited uh, to attend the reception given this evening by the Secretary General of the Council of Europe in the Restaurant Blue. May I also remember uh, members to leave their voting key paid, pads on their desk. Ladies and gentlemen, the sitting is now closed. Thank you.